Thank you, Donald. Well, like Donald Trump, a major Western country has elected a leader who has never held elected office at any point in his life. In fact, he'd never stood before. Emmanuel Macron, who, uh, after a very successful education, made a lot of money with Rothschilds in the banking sector, was appointed briefly as finance minister in a long socialist government, uh, but a year ago set up his own brand new political movement, I think as much as anything else because the Socialist Party in France had collapsed, and yesterday he got 66% of the vote, and Marine Le Pen got about 34% of the vote. So it was a big win for Macron, a two-to-one win. Um, Not a particular surprise. I think some people thought Le Pen might get a few pips higher than that. Uh, We might examine why that wasn't the case. Uh, But uh, what I thought was astonishing, indeed, audacious, was that his first act, having been elected as the new president, the eighth president of the Fifth Republic of France, was as he walked up to give his victory speech, this is the music that we heard. You have chosen audacity, and this audacity, we will pursue it, and every single day to come, we will carry on being audacious, because that is what French men and women are expecting, because after all, that is what Europe and the world are expecting from us. Vive la République! Vive la France! Well, it certainly was audacious, very audacious, when you've just been elected the president of your country to walk up and give your speech to the anthem of a different country. Now, we knew that Macron was pro-European Union. We knew that he was a globalist. I would wager there'd be a lot of people in France really, really shocked that he chose that piece of music before he gave his opening address as the president-elect. I must say, I was very, very surprised indeed. But whilst he is pro-EU, he is, as we've seen with pro-EU leaders in Britain, making an argument for reform. This is Macron last night. I'm a pro-European. I defended constantly during this election the European idea and European policies and so on. Because I, I do believe it's extremely important for French people and, and for the place of our country in globalization. The question is that you have almost half of this country angry with the European idea and with a lack of satisfaction vis-à-vis what we decided 10 years ago and during the, the, the recent years. So we have to reform this Europe. We need a new European Union in situation to protect our people and to regulate our globalisation. Well, there's Macron. He's talking about change. Not so much change in France's relationship with the European Union, but fundamental change within the European Union itself. We will look at that. We will examine that. But given the scale of his victory, does President Emmanuel Macron mean that the future of the European Union is now secure. And if you think, yes, absolutely, Macron is the EU saviour, then call us on 0345 6060973. If you think, actually, the whole thing's completely unreformable and there's very little one man can do, then, of course, you can text at 84850. If you think, actually, the whole thing's doomed anyway, it doesn't make any difference, then using the hashtag Farage and LBC, you can tweet as LBC. And don't forget, you can watch us live on LBC's Facebook page right now. And just to give a sort of some sort of reminder of what happened yesterday, Macron got just over 18 million votes. Le Pen got just over 11 million votes. 10 million people did not go out to vote. But astonishingly, 4 million people who went to vote, either despoiled their paper by writing something very rude on the paper, or by tearing it up, or by leaving the paper blank and put it back in the box. 12% of people spoiled their papers. Now, that is astonishing. I suspect some of them were hard leftists who see Macron as a big banker and couldn't possibly bring themselves to vote for him or Le Pen. And indeed, many of them have been out protesting, or some might say rioting, on the streets of Paris today. Uh, But I also think there were a large number of people who in the first round had voted for Eurosceptic candidates, particularly Mélenchon, 
who is the hard left winger who basically wants France to leave the European Union, who simply couldn't bring themselves to vote for Le Pen. Either way, it's remarkable that four million people made the effort to go to the polling station and to spoil their papers. So is the EU saved with President Macron? I'm going to ask Phil in Cobham that very question. Good evening. Yeah, good evening, Nigel. Well, of course, yeah, it's far too early to say whether the EU saved and uh, by one person. Of course not. Sure. I mean, one thing is, as far as I'm concerned, the you know, collaboration, you, uh, a union of, of Europe is is the future, whether whether you like it or not. I mean, I, I think this is ridiculous in this in this day and age. I mean, we're seeing such enormous political changes going on. Uh, you know, in, in geopolitical changes in the world. And, you know, we, we're in risk of losing our Western culture if we're not careful. I mean, I, I think, you know, the vision, what, what's like, since we've been in the European Union, we've never been committed at all to the, to the, to the, to the vision of, of what it's all about. Well, the I vision, mean, Phil, shows... Phil, the vision is very simple. It's the United States of Europe with its own army, its own foreign policy, its own currency, its own government. I mean, that's the vision, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. And, and I, I've got, I, I don't see the problem with that. I mean, you know, we're, we, you, you're going to pull away, we're now going to pull away, you know, a tiny little nation with less than 1% of the world's population. You think you're going to be able to easily and freely... Why are you talking uh, us down, uh, Phil? Why are you being so negative uh, about us? What? Why are you being so well, negative I'm, I'm about not. us? I'm just... Because the world is changing, Nigel. You're I mean, right, you know, Phil. Do you know what's happening, Phil? All over the world, all over the world, and this has now been going on ever since 1945 continually, all over the world, what is happening is big states and big structures are breaking down into smaller individual structures. Every single year that goes by, we get more nations in the world. We can think of the breakup of much of the old USSR. We can think of Yugoslavia, which was put together... Uh, with the aim to bring peace, which is broken down into smaller units and may break down into smaller ones too. Phil, the point I'm making, actually, is that in the modern world, pe- people are not aggregating in big blocks, they're breaking into smaller ones. Uh, look, Nigel, whether you like it or not, the future is it's, it's, it's within the internet, it's within travel, it's within communication, the world is getting smaller. But there are very great difference, cultural differences within blocks, regions in the world. Now, we risk losing our influence and our um, by, you know, projection, if you like, within the world because we are withdrawing well, Phil, I couldn't, take, I couldn't take a more contrary view to you. I think, actually, the more you're part of the European Union, the more you lose your voice on the world stage. Already, Britain doesn't have a voice in world trade. Uh, there are plans within the European Union for, for example, on the UN Security Council. The individual member countries, France, Britain, to be replaced by one EU representative. And I think, actually, we're going to have a bigger voice in the world. But, Phil, the real question, the real question wasn't so much about us. It was about France. Phil, you've made your argument very well. I thank you. Phil thinks the EU is the future. I happen to say I don't particularly agree, but uh, maybe you agree with Phil. If you do, let me know. What does Ranjit in Birmingham think? Has Macron, will President Macron effectively kill off Euroscepticism in France and be good for the European project? Well, he, indirectly, he, he's, he, he may be the saviour of the uh, Union, but uh, I think the real person who's uh, saved the Union has been the election of uh, Donald Trump. Do you? Because uh, um, I think because he's so fickle and he, can never, he, he never sticks to what he says. You think he's... So, Ran- sorry, Ranjit, you think the 45th president of the USA is thick, yeah? No, no, fickle. 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 Sorry, I misheard fickle, you. Yeah. Right, fickle. No, no. Okay, go on. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, so um, uh, it's made uh, the uh, the EU very insecure. Whereas uh, with a with a, uh, a pro free trade uh, and a pro NATO president, it, it made the EU feel secure. Made me feel secure enough to vote to leave. And so um, with, with an anti free trade uh, uh, president in, in the United States who complains about surpluses from uh, Mexico, and guess guess who's got a bigger surplus than than Mexico with the United States? Us. And so he'll be. Uh, he's been telling his uh, uh, trade negotiators to, uh, he actually told his trade negotiator at the G7 to remove a, a communique, uh, a regular communique that the G7 had to free trade he, uh, and, and the removal of tar- tariffs. 
and, and at the behest of the Americans, they removed that communique. So now uh, the EU feels unsafe, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to pull together to, to try and uh, uh, defend itself against the, the uh, well, Russians and other, other threats. We'll and it see. feels unsafe uh, economically, because if, feels, if, you, if, you want, if they want to trade freely, then the United States is not a reliable partner in, in establishing free trade around the world. I think, actually, Ranji, there are different messages coming from the Trump regime on free trade. I mean, for example, you know, the message loudly and clearly that Britain could be at the front of the queue, uh, the message that Germany was benefiting from an undervalued euro, the message that China actually was the villain in this, and yet he appears to have formed quite a good relationship with the Chinese, particularly apropos North Korea. I think it's as yet unsure, Ranji, despite Trump's instincts, exactly what he will do, but I get the perspective. Um, On Twitter, I get the European Union is the future. UK Brexit will be a big failure because of UK isolationism, and that's what Christian tells me. And on Twitter, I support France's democratic decision to choose Macron. He has a big job to take on. Best of luck, France. Well, do you know what? He does have a big job to take on, uh, because it would appear there was a great big wave of optimism in Paris last night. And the image that the young of France have gone for, Macron, this big youthful image, think about this. 80% of the over 65s voted Macron. Le Pen's biggest support and growing support is in the 18 to 24 year olds and those indeed going up to the age of 40. Actually, generationally, the European project in the rest of Europe is in trouble. The only country in which the youngsters appear to be overwhelmingly in favour of EU membership is the United Kingdom. Fascinating. So don't buy the idea that Macron is about youth and optimism. Actually, it was the pensioners, scared, I think, of what leaving the euro might do to their properties and might do to their pensions. Interesting. Right now, you're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively on LBC. It's 7.15. Nick Ferrari at breakfast on LBC. The President of the European Commission joked at a conference in Italy before the weekend. I will express myself in French because slowly but surely English is losing importance. Hans Jürgen Zahorka, who's chief editor of the European Union Foreign Affairs Journal. This is improving with uh, French and uh, German and. You're Indian telling Spanish. me that they're learning Spanish in Syria. Those Syrians going to Spain have to learn Spanish. No, no, no. Those they might have to, but they arrive with an, a, a passable knowledge of English. Nick Ferrari at breakfast every weekday morning from 7 only on LBC. With Hampton by Hilton, now open in Aberdeen. Do you have a pension? Maybe you've got more than one. How do you know if they're in the right pension funds, making as much money as possible for your retirement? Answer is, you probably don't. At The Pension Works, our fully qualified independent financial advisors could add instant value to your retirement fund. Simply text the word YES to 8322 for your free Pension Works health check. That's YES to 8322 today. Your pensions working harder with The Pension Works. Divorce can be expensive. It affects your finances, assets, home, savings, pension, and most of all, your relationship with your children. It's probably one of the toughest times you'll ever go through. Cordell and Cordell understands these issues and helps men maximize their roles in their children's lives. Call now on 0330-6060-161 or visit cordellcordell.co.uk, office in central London. A partner men can count on. We've got it at Selco. Selco is where the train goes. At Selco Builders Warehouse, we've got real deals on a wide range of trade quality building products. In May, we've got 125 by 18 millimeter solid oak rustic lacquered flooring for only £20.95 XVAT per square meter. Now that's a real deal. We've got even more real deals and thousands of products in stock at the massive new Selco Builders Warehouse on Slyfield Industrial Estate, Guildford. Selco is where the train go. Did you know you can start an Admiral multi-car policy with just one car? One car? <laughs> really? Sure. Friends and family can join afterwards when their insurance is due. Just give us the heads up now. Well, it's that easy? Yeah. And if you switch from single car to multi-car insurance, we'll guarantee to lower your price. Guarantee to lower my price? Guaranteed. Wow. Admiral, looking out for you. Oh, the garden's an absolute mess. 
It's my turn to have the cross-stitch crew round for tea and Battenberg. I'll have to get a landscape gardener in. And a wildlife expert. It's a jungle out there. We could be eaten alive by those deadly flutterbugs. Oh, relax. Relax. It's Trust a Trader. Marvellous local tradespeople who've been tried, tested and reviewed. All specialists in their areas, from landscape gardening to pest control. Oh, visit trustatrader.com! What if you took a holiday where your inhibition stayed at home and everything from menus to memories was supersized? What if the city felt like every movie you'd ever seen and discovering hidden bars and delis helped you rediscover each other? A world of what if is waiting. US City Breaks with British Airways, now from just £499 per person for three nights, including return flights and hotel. Book now at BA.com. Limited availability, date exclusions, conditions and booking fees may apply at All Protected. Leading Britain's conversation, The Nigel Farage Show. Tweet at LBC using the hashtag Farage on LBC. It's Macron, 66%. It's Le Pen, 34%. He is going to be the president. So what happens next? Well, he will be sworn in as the French president on the 14th of May. Uh, but kind of, there's a whole new set of elections to come. So the French, having just voted twice in the last fortnight will now have to vote twice in the month of June, because what follows the presidential elections are the elections for the French Parliament, the Assemblée Nationale. There are 577 seats, candidates run, and the top two then go into a runoff a fortnight later. So it's going to be one hell of a battle, because, of course, Macron's party en marche, which has been rebranded today La République en marche, don't have any seats in the Assemblée Nationale at the moment, and he needs a working majority to govern. I expect what you're going to see is a deal done with the Socialists and maybe even the Conservatives, and they will do all they can to try and stop Le Pen from getting many seats in the Assemblée Nationale. Of the 577 seats, in the first round of the French presidential election, uh, Le Pen actually topped the poll in 216 of those seats. So a big battle to come in June. And for those of you uh, that are moaning, and I understand why, but we're moaning about the fact we've got yet another election in this country. Just think of it. The French will have been asked to vote four times in the space of about 11 weeks. Um, interestingly, I talked about the voting and the number of spoiled papers. The actual turnout was indeed the lowest for 50 years in any French presidential runoff. So that's what happens next. And I wonder, I've talked a little bit about Macron, what happens next to Euroscepticism in France? Bear in mind that in the first round, 46.5% of voters voted Eurosceptic. They voted for Le Pen, they voted for Melanchon, they voted for Nicolas Dupont-Ignor, and there was one other candidate who got a very small score, but was clearly anti-EU. So Le what was Le Pen's response to losing? What well, initial disappointment, uh, but then a speech, I thought a very interesting speech, a speech saying that she has to make further reform and she has to rebrand the Front National. And I think, quite honestly, if she'd been a candidate that had not been associated with the Front National and was not seen to be in her father's shadow and to be judged by her father, she would have got many more of those Eurosceptic votes yesterday. As it was, she got, you know, let's say nearly 35%, but there's another 10 or 11% who'd registered Euroscepticism in the first round that didn't do it. My guess is she'll do a deal with my friend Nicolas Dupontignan, who's a conservative Eurosceptic. My guess is they will try and get rid of anybody in the Front National who could ever be seen to be linked with political extremism. If they do that and get it right, then I think things would be different. Uh, and I do think, actually, that unless Macron succeeds, given the extent to which he's raised expectations, you could see Le Pen making a much bigger run at this in five years' time. But maybe the one shadow that is on her horizon and on the Eurosceptics' horizon is her niece, 27-year-old Marion Marcherelle Le Pen, um, young, uh, seemed to be good-looking, very eloquent, uh, and she's made it clear she's not entirely happy with Marine's leadership and may well challenge for the leadership of the Front National. So I suspect there's a lot more family rivalry to come uh, within the Le Pen family over the course of the next few months, weeks, indeed, years. But I think for anyone that thinks that this victory by Macron 
means that the Eurosceptics in France have been killed off. I would say that's rubbish. She got double the score her father got when he reached the last round many years ago. Uh, and I think, as I say, if she can rebrand the party, she can take it on to bigger things. That is my view. What does Will in Plymouth think? Has Macron saved the European Union? Um, hi, Nigel. Yes, I do think he saved the European Union, but ultimately it's, he wants to appoint a European finance minister, I believe. Oh, yes. Um, so I think he's very much going to be speeding up the whole process of European integration. I think he wants France to come even more under the yoke of Brussels. Um, he wants a, a more close Europe. I think it was summed up very nicely by uh, one of your friends, Aaron Banks's tweet last night, where he said uh, this time it's all been, it's going to be very nice for France to save uh, the Germans the bullet, uh, and the bullets and the fuel. Um, for sort of taking over taking over France the way, but I think he's he has saved the European Union. And I think it's going to deepen European integration uh, within within the country within uh, between European and, uh, ah, between but Europe will, and France. But will does deeper European integration based in Brussels make the people love the project more or loathe it more? Loathe it more. I believe the French Euroscepticism, really, from an economic point of view, seems to be rather different from the uh, Euroscepticism from our sort of point of view across uh, across the channel, whereas uh, in, with us it's more free trade, whereas with the French yeah. Euroscepticism it seems to be more about protectionist politics, more about sort of the interests of your own country rather than a more sort of global view. Um, I think it could help the Eurosceptics. I think your prediction of Le Pen maybe having a bit more of a resurgence in three years time, in a five years time, sorry, could be could be an interesting one, but it depends A, how the Eurozone goes and B, how um, Macron goes, because I think really he's going to be following much more of the consensus of the uh, Socialist Party that he worked under previously, yeah. and if that happens, I really could see an increase in Euroscepticism within France. Well, th- thank you very much for your comments and your call, and interesting isn't it, that Macron was called a centrist all through the campaign and yet was happy to serve as a minister in the socialist government. I'm not sure, uh, other than other than the fact that he believes in globalism uh, and he believes in European unionism, difficult to know exactly where on the centre, centre-left spectrum, Macron really is. And actually, if you listen to his campaign speeches, they were pretty light on content. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, Ted says to me through an SMS, Nigel, I think it shows who is Macron's master, and he plans to visit her ASAP. Uh, well, interesting, Ted. Uh, yes, he did have a 10-minute conversation with Angela Merkel last night, and he's announced he'll be going to Berlin to visit her as quickly as possible possible. Uh, I know what Eurosceptics in France will think. Uh, They'll say, as indeed Scott in Greenwich says to me, Macron is an EU puppet. Hollande was loathed by France and was obviously told to stand aside so that their boy could be planted. All that it's done is postpone the collapse of the rotten EU construct. So some will see, some will see Macron as being the EU's puppet. Others will uh, link him more directly, I think, to Angela Merkel. Either way, I suppose, to be really objective about this, for the European Union to succeed, France and Germany do need to get along together. Steve in Milton Keynes, has Macron saved the European Union for all time? No. Right, go on. No, not at all. He's going to make it worse. Long ter- short term, it'd be better. Long term, it'd make it worse. There'll be more unemployment, Nigel. There'll be more ter- terrorist attacks. There'll be more migration. There'll be more, um, you know, the armed forces will be more stretched. It's going to be a disaster. He That's certainly... A disaster. You know that. St- st- you know it. Well, Steve, I mean, I, I, I know that he's a great believer in the free movement of people. Uh, he's already today indicated that he thinks sanctions should be taken against Poland unless they go yeah. along with migrant quotas. He, Algeria. he went to Algeria. I know he did. To get more people. I mean, can you believe that? Can you believe that? So, Steve... He, this, this man, this man, this man, that they have no idea. There's, it, that man has got more skeletons in his closet you, than you have any idea about. We all know what we're talking about. It's all going to come out. Steve, 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 Steve. I've heard this about, I've heard this about lots of people, including myself. I mean, do you really believe that, that there are some serious... Skeletons in that closet. Uh, well, listen, Nigel. He's a very good-looking man. Yes. Very articulate. Very yes. clever. Yes. Very, very wealthy. Yes. How many of your friends that you know that half that wealth married their Ford, married their teacher, twenty-five years older than them? 
Steve, it takes Boy, all sorts to make the world go round, you know. But listen, Steve, I thank you for your call. Andrew on Facebook says, Funny how all the Le Pen voters aren't rioting and throwing their dummies out of the pram because it's unfair. They didn't get what they wanted. Well, that certainly, Andrew, is what's happening to the hard left on the streets of Paris today. And incidentally, what did Le Pen do after losing? Well, she phoned Macron to congratulate him. She then, and if you haven't seen it, have a look. In fact, we'll get some clips up on LBC's uh, website. She then danced the night away in a disco. So that's, I guess, in a way, that's how you should lose, isn't it, really? Craig says on Facebook, I'm concerned about the appointment of Macron. Well, he's not been appointed, he's been elected. And the impact he'll have on Brexit negotiations. Well, Craig, you know, we did discuss this last week on this show. Uh, I said whether you love her or hate her, actually, she would be, Le Pen would have been better for Brexit negotiations than Macron, who's going to club together with Juncker and, as I see it, the bully boys in Brussels. Mind you, it's not just me that sees that. British Prime Minister now stands on the steps of Downing Street and has a go at the Brussels bully boys. Max in Guildford, what do you think that Monsieur Macron means for the EU? Everyone's congratulating the wrong guy. They should be congratulating Mrs Merkel and not not Macron, because that's who's going to be running France. And in terms of the EU, it's it's doomed. It's, we have to wait a little bit longer because, let's be honest, they never, ever, ever let an anti-EU leader win the French elections. They pumped so much behind him. They said he was an outsider, but he's been, he's, been, he's been working in the European Union for years. Anyone who calls him an outsider is, is bizarre. It's just bizarre. I think the EU will collapse. I think the, the rise in the... Bear in mind, they haven't actually changed the party name, and they had a, a fascist leader, or alleged fascist leader, what, seven, eight years ago? Yep. She's done extremely well to bring them this much, this further forward in such a short space of time, and I think, actually, she would be much better in five years. You may well be right, Max, and the one thing I think where she perhaps would be disappointed was the big debate, the big head-to-head debate, where I don't think she came out as well as she should have done, but she did utter yeah. one fantastic immortal line, and she said, whoever wins this election, it'll be a woman running France, either me or Angela Merkel. That was her perspective, and that is what a lot of the Eurosceptic cynics will say. Max, I thank you. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively on LBC. It's 7.30, and time for the news with Moira Alderson. Despite not hitting their target for seven years, the Prime Minister's confirmed she'll be sticking to her pledge to reduce net migration to under 100,000. Jeremy Corbyn's promised free car parking at all NHS hospitals in England if Labour wins the election, while the Lib Dems are calling on major employers to do more to monitor ethnic diversity. A 35-year-old man's been charged following a dog attack in Liverpool, which has left a toddler with serious injuries. It happened yesterday as the two-year-old was playing in her garden. Chad Evans has been re-signed by Sheffield. United. The Wales striker was released by the club in 2012 when he was convicted of rape. That was subsequently quashed and he's now joined from Chesterfield for an undisclosed fee. LBC weather, a mostly dry night ahead with a mix of patchy cloud and clear spells, turning frosty for some with an overnight low of 8 degrees. LBC Travel, good evening, I'm Anne-Marie Walsh. In Hertfordshire, the M25 is queuing clockwise between Junction 23 for South Mims and 25 for the A10. That's after an accident earlier. In London, Fulham Broadway is closed in both directions, either side of Stamford Bridge Stadium. That's ahead of the Chelsea match this evening. The A4 in Knightsbridge, that's slow moving eastbound towards Scotch Corner because of roadworks. And in Gloucestershire, the A46 is blocked in both directions near West Littleton and it's because of an accident. For more real-time traffic updates go to lbc.co.uk this is lbc we've been thinking about the nuclear family that vision of mum dad and their 2.4 children and how times have changed how we're now living longer and our kids are leaving home later so we thought with all this change shouldn't we change the way we think about mortgages so we now cater for all types of family and are trying to turn generation rent into generation buy mortgages for how life is now NatWest, we are what we do. Your home may be repossessed if you do not keep up repayments on your mortgage. Is your company thinking of moving office? If so, this could be the perfect opportunity to revolutionise your business, transform your workplace and inspire your staff. Speak to Maris Interiors, who've been designing and fitting out workplaces for over three decades. Book your free consultation, attend a free seminar or get your free guidebook. Go to office relocation .co.uk Morris Workplace Design Experts
I wish I could create content like videos and music. But I need the skills to bring my ideas to life. I wish I could write apps, but I need to learn how to code. Not just do sums. I wish I could get trained up for a media career. While studying for my GCSEs and A-levels. You mean I can? Really? Your future is here. The Global Academy in Hayes is a state school for 14 to 19 year olds interested in a media career. Find out more and register now at globalacademy.com. What if you took a holiday where your inhibitions stayed at home and everything from menus to memories was supersized? What if the city felt like every movie you'd ever seen and discovering hidden bars and delis helped you rediscover each other? A world of what if is waiting. USD breaks with British Airways, now from just £499 per person for three nights, including return flights and hotel. Book now at BA.com. Limited availability, date exclusions, conditions and booking fees may apply. At all protected. Oh, the garden's an absolute mess. It's my turn to have the cross-stitch crew round for tea and Battenberg. I'll have to get a landscape gardener in. And a wildlife expert. It's a jungle out there. We could be eaten alive by those deadly flutterbugs. Oh, relax, relax. It's Trust a Trader. Marvellous local tradespeople who've been tried, tested and reviewed. All specialists in their areas, from landscape gardening to pest control. Oh, visit trustatrader.com! Trust a Trader.com Leading Britain's conversation. LBC, The Nigel Farage Show. Well, whilst the world's media is obsessed and filled with the French elections and this new 39-year-old president, Emmanuel Macron... Of course, there is still a general election going on in this country. And today, uh, Theresa May confirmed that a Conservative government would maintain the target of reducing net migration to below 100,000 a year. Uh, well, that promise was derided by Labour, who said she'd come nowhere near achieving this goal during her six years as Home Secretary when David Cameron was Prime Minister. UKIP sought to put pressure on the Tories over the issue by setting out its own one-in-one-out pledge to reduce net migration to zero. Paul, party leader Paul Nuttall said young Britons should be encouraged to take seasonal jobs, including picking fruit and vegetables in student holidays, to reduce the demand for foreign labour. And Jeremy Corbyn set out plans today to scrap hospital car parking charges. The £162 million cost of that covered by an 8% hike in tax on private health schemes. have to say, scrapping hospital parking charges was something I campaigned on when I led UKIP in 2015. So there we are, even Labour picking up one or two of those ideas. But back to our debate. Does Macron, being elected the President of France and being welcomed the way that he has around the European Union and indeed around the world by Obama and many others, does this actually save the European Union or, after five years of him, Will the French Eurosceptics come back even more strongly? I'm going to ask Patrick in Battersea that very question. Well, we don't know what will happen in five years' time with regard to how he does or doesn't do with, with various policies in, in France. What worries me deeply is that I'm hearing British people who claim to be Brexiteers and doing it for Britain saying that they would rather a fascist won that election. That bothers me deeply. Who was the fascist candidate then, Patrick? The fascist candidate was Miss Le Pen. Was it? Can you ex- well, let me just say this to you, Patrick. Uh, for 18 years, I have sat in the European Parliament, I've watched the French National Front, and I've made it absolutely clear at no point in time would we as UKIP do a deal with them, because I felt, I felt they held some pretty deeply unpleasant views. But what I have seen, Patrick, since 2011, when she became leader of the party, is a change in direction. And I don't think she said anything in the run-up to this uh, to this presidential campaign that could be deemed to be fascist in any way at all. If you think I'm wrong, please tell me. Well, what was she saying when she was the leader of the Front National in the last election? Go on. You didn't think that was fascist, what she was saying about, about foreigners and about all sorts of other, you know, things in France? Would you know... Front National. Do you remember our National Front? I, Patrick, I've made the point to you that I've ha- I've have strong problems and reservations with the Front National. In fact, I said to her five years ago, I said, what you ought to do is get rid of that party and start again from scratch. And indeed, when she gave that speech last night, uh, she was kind of hinting that's what she's going to do. I do not doubt, Patrick, for a moment that there were those in the French National Front, maybe still are, who have fascist past or fascist views. I do not think it's fair. I genuinely 
don't think it's fair to say that about Marine Le Pen. Well, I'm sorry. She was the leader of the National Front a few weeks ago. Suddenly, yes. she's not the leader of the National Front, so she's not a, <laughs> so she's not a fascist. Well, Patrick, okay, Nigel, whatever you reckon. Patrick, she has tried. She, she, she's expelled people for Holocaust denial. She has tried to turn it into a different party, has she not? I wouldn't doubt that, but they're still fascists. They're still extreme right-wingers. Right, well... That's pa- what they are. Well, and Patrick... I can't believe British people... Yeah. Would, would, would in the same calendar year talk about going to the cenotaph and, 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 and you know, doing mm. what we do for, for lot fallen soldiers and supporting a fascist. That, that beggars belief to me. But you know what? Carry on, people. Do Pat- thing. Patrick, I completely get your comments about elements within the French National Front that have been there for decades, but I don't buy it as far as Marine Le Pen is concerned. But if you feel like Patrick, please let me know. I'm going to ask Yuri in Brighton, is Macron going to save the European project and kill off Euroscepticism? Yuri, good evening. I think he's going to have a struggle on his hands, and I think the only way for him to even get close to kind of getting European Union back on track is to fight to reinforce a minimum wage yeah. to be equal all over European Union. So there is not such big disparities in opportunities for people all over. Ah, but Yuri, um, but Yuri, how do you have a minimum wage that works in Paris and works in Bucharest? Their, their economies are at such different levels. Yes, but we did it. They, we did it in UK. They did it in all over France. Yes, and, so and you have a minimum wage that gives you a certain level, and obviously other places will, will vary a bit. Uh, obviously, another thing I was going to say is they need to start forcing the bigger corporations to start paying proper wages abroad, outside UK, outside EU, so that there is more markets for European and British companies to trade their goods to, rather than just bringing goods in. Do you think, Yuri, that if... If workers in all different businesses and industries, if workers across Europe felt they were getting a fairer deal and better pay, that that would kill off Euroscepticism? It wouldn't kill off Euroscepticism because a good, a good, healthy scepticism would would keep systems to keep developing. But it would bring a Euroscepticism on a different level. It would bring a Euroscepticism to the level is we're criticizing you to make you and you listen to us and you make things workable for us. At the moment, such a huge difference in opportunities all over Europe, these things, they pretty much bring, they give you Eurosceptics in France, in UK, this extra push because obviously they see people coming in and those people are willing to do something which in here people will struggle with at the wages they take. I, no, 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 you're absolutely right. And this was a big contributory factor. However, I don't see, Mr. I don't see Monsieur Macron uh, trying to reverse this particularly because generally the bigger the businesses involved with this, the more they make the argument for free markets. And indeed, Yuri, there was a very telling point in the referendum campaign, when Lord Rose, who actually was in charge of the Remain campaign, although after this comment went to ground, he was asked by um, a Commons House of Commons committee that if Britain left the European Union and took back control of our borders, would that not mean that the wages of British people would go up? And Lord Rose said yes, but I don't think that would be a good thing. You know, after that, they hid him for the rest of the campaign. So, Yuri, I take your point. I get your point. If people felt they were paid better, if people felt their wages weren't being driven down, there would be less Eurosceptic sentiment in Britain and France and elsewhere. But I don't really see that happening. Um, Ian in Thurrock, has Macron saved the European project? Uh, no. Uh, personally, I think that the European project is a proven failure. And uh, I, I want to put the point there that Macron is just part of the EU Merkel machine. Um, I think that he's going to use his power uh, to control the people in the mainstream media in France to influence the popularity of the Front National um, using diverse uh, tactics uh, similar to the way the Conservatives and Labour have teamed up to try and push UKIP out um, to try and uh, stem any kind of competition uh, to the EU. And I think that that will be driven up uh, from the top, really from... uh, 
from the EU. Uh, but I think it's it's a pretty big master plan they've got. Uh, but it, but Ian, wouldn't you wouldn't you agree that there are elements of Marine Le Pen's party that do actually upset and put off some Eurosceptic voters in France? Um, yes, because um, you know if you if you look at um, the difference between UKIP and then look at the difference between the National Front. There are vast differences, uh, whereas UKIP um, are seen as a party who talk about immigration. When you know, when the uh, National Front talk about it, it comes out as racist. They're, I, I think. I think. Where... Ian, the point is that I think she has made improvements in her party, but I think I'd be the first to say she's got a long way to go. Ian, I thank you. I'm going to go quickly to Ray in Stoke. Ray, Emmanuel Macron, new president of France, has he saved the European project? No, he's not going to make a bit of difference. No, not a bit. I've Why got, is that? We've got, well, I've got absolutely no confidence in governments in, in most of the Western countries nowadays, uh, Nigel, of, of running a cohesive society and creating jobs for people. They're just bringing people in on the cheap. To be honest, I think we're stoking up a lot of trouble for our kids. Yeah, I mean, is there an I'm, argument? I'm not... is, is there an argument, Ray, that, that now we've voted for Brexit, uh, maybe we can put a stop to that problem? I don't think it's going to make any difference, Nigel, to be honest. I, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting civil unrest in the future. I'm hoping it's not in my lifetime, but I'm expecting it in my kids. And is that because, you know what, it, is, what, is, what is that the because they can't get decent jobs and they can't get houses and things like that? Yeah, I mean, well, well look, at the end of the day, we're bringing a lot of people in here. We're creating a lot of, a lot of cheap jobs. Uh, they keep saying, you know, they're, they're a benefit to the country. Yes, they, they might be when it's, they're paying taxes and stuff, but with infrastructure, blah, 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 schools, hospital, but... They are creating. They're not. They're just not running anything, Nigel. Any of them doesn't matter. Your mate, your mate, Aunt Maggie sold everything off. Labour are incompetent selling gold off. It, the whole thing's a mess, and it's going to get worse. Ray, pessimistic of Stoke. I thank you for your call. Nyan says to me on Facebook, Macron will not be able to rule France in peace, and thus the problem will make Euroscepticism rise, not die. Well, certainly, it's been a tricky start on the streets of Paris today. Um, and on text I get, Macron is deluded. The bureaucrats of the EU are not ready to give up power. And that's what Philip in Whiteleaf says. And Philip, I'm going to address that very point in one moment. But right now, you're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively on LBC. It's 7.45. This is LBC. Coming up at 8 on LBC, Clive Bull. Theresa May says that the Conservatives will stick to their pledge to reduce net migration to tens of thousands. Do you think that's a target that's desirable or indeed achievable? Clive Bull on LBC. New drama on BT TV. AMC's Fear the Walking Dead is back and exclusive to BT customers. We survive now at all costs. It's time to face your fear with season three. Why are you doing this? BT TV. Big entertainment, tiny prices. You'll need BT Broadband and a fast enough line terms apply. The FCA has introduced a deadline to permanently end claims for missold PPI. When this passes, you could miss out. And with billions of pounds still to be repaid, some of that money could be yours. So call now and speak to Claim for Refunds. We have helped thousands win millions since 2009 and we could help you too. All we need is the name of your bank. So if you've had any loan or credit card, let Claim for Refunds find out for free if you had PPI. And if you have, you can claim yourself, or we can handle it for you. It's up to you. And if we don't win your money back, you don't pay a penny. Guaranteed. You could be owed thousands and not even know you have PPI. Call 0800 180 8180 or text PPI to 88882. In Britain, transit means business. Business for and or and at your local transit show live, it means money-saving business. Visit your nearest participating Ford dealer between the 13th and 21st of May, take a test drive, and you'll save £500 on selected new Ford commercial vehicles. Ford, go further. To qualify for the additional £500 customer saving off the recommended retail price of selected new Ford commercial vehicles, you must test drive any new Ford commercial vehicle between the 13th and 21st of May 2017. Contract between 13th and 21st of May 2017. Register between 13th of May and 31st of December 2017. At participating dealers only, exclude Ranger XL and XLT models. 937 AD. England is a nation divided. Small kings and Viking lords are vying for land and power. At the eye of the storm stands Dunstan of Glastonbury Abbey. 
the man who will control the destiny of seven kings of England and the fate of an entire nation. This is the original game for the English throne. Dunstan, the historical fiction blockbuster by Con Igledon. On sale now in hardback, audiobook and ebook. Watch Fear the Walking Dead 9 p.m. Monday, 5th of June on BT TV. And if you miss seasons one and two, you can own them now by buying them on the BT TV store. Visit bt.com slash TV. BT TV. Big entertainment, tiny prices. You'll need BT broadband and a fast enough line. Terms apply. The Nigel Farage Show on LBC. In some ways, just in some ways, that election yesterday in France was a little bit of a referendum, wasn't it? Because it's perfectly clear that Marine Le Pen wants France to leave the EU and Emmanuel Macron believes in the European project. But, crucially, what Macron was saying and saying it more... You know, Le Pen was saying, I'll renegotiate, uh, but if I don't get it, we'll vote to leave. And everyone knew her renegotiation would not be taken very seriously. But what Macron was saying is we can reform the European Union. And indeed, you know, he said that we need to reform in depth the European Union and our European project. To allow the e EU to continue as it is would be a betrayal. So he gets elected saying he's going to reform the European Union. And I guess a large number of French people think, well, that's terrific. It means we're going to have a different relationship. I tell you what, under President Macron, quite right too, you are going to have a different relationship with the European Union. It started with Ode to Joy, beautiful piece of music though it may be, being played as he walked up to give his victory speech. What he's going to be campaigning for is he wants a separate budget for the, Euro, for, for the Eurozone. He wants a Eurozone minister. He wants the Eurozone to have its own parliament. He wants to transfer power from France to Brussels and the EU institutions, and that is the way he uses the word reform. Is it any wonder when Juncker says he's really happy that the French have chosen a European future? Together, we will be stronger. Mrs Merkel has said she praised him for championing a united European Union. And Commissioner Pierre Moscovici says he now has a mandate, and this mandate is to propose our, to our European partners a deeper integration and a deepening of the Eurozone. Well, there you are. That is reform, Macron style. It is going to be more centralisation, and it's why I think, actually, when, when the French people wake up to really what they've elected, I suspect Euroscepticism will grow if it can find a political means that it can unite around. Because right at the minute, Euroscepticism in France is very, very divided. I wonder what you think to that. I wonder what Brian in Dublin thinks. Brian, good evening. And you're calling, of course, from a country that twice have rejected European treaties over the last 20 years or so. Brian, good evening. <laughs> good evening, Noise and me, Al Flower. How are you keeping? I'm keeping very well, thank you. So, has he, has he saved the project, Brian? Um, no. Um, I think it was done and dusted when uh, the UK up sticks and left. Um, but on, it's, it's, just, it's, it's, a ticking, it's a ticking time bomb. It's on, you know, it's an endangered species. It's, it's, it's just not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, you know. Yes, um, and 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 I mean, would you be would you welcome that, or would you see it as a disaster if the whole thing broke up? To be honest with you, I, I'm a big firm believer in democracy, right? Yes. Now I voted no the first time for the Lisbon Treaty uh, all those years ago. Yep. And I voted no the second time, which was a joke. We should never had a second referendum. And yeah, I know I'm getting off point, but um, yeah, when I realised who are who basically are governing us as in Ireland and who were governing the United Kingdom. Because when you look at it, the bigger picture, you're not really making like, your laws and most of your current decisions are decided in Brussels. No, you know because, I mean? no because, Brian, what you're doing is you're pooling sovereignty to make decisions at a higher and better level. That's at least the argument. No, I don't buy it. <laughs> and... You know, like, um, like I have to respect. Some, like, I don't always agree with what you say, but you you went out twenty plus years. You did it. You got England out. You know, like, out, out of Europe for better or for worse. So, 
congratulations on that. Well, that's kind but, of um, you. And if there yeah. was, if there was a political party in Ireland advocating withdrawal, would they get many votes, in your opinion? Oh, it's a tough question. Um, I say they would, but I don't know if the, uh, the leave um, or something such as a big change they would get as many as is needed to make that big change. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, <coughs> well, um, certainly, I mean, yeah. certainly there is there is Eurosceptic opinion, Bran, in Ireland, and there's been rejection, not just of the Lisbon Treaty, but of the Nice Treaty before that. Um, but you sound like a pretty hardened Eurosceptic, uh, the type of which, I think, Bran, you're on the increase right across the European Union, and I thank you very much for your call. Peter, in Wimbledon, where does the European Union go from here with President Macron? From strength to strength to strength, Nigel. And does it? I, I, I understand you're absolutely desperate, desperate for people like Le Pen and others, right wing fascists, to get to power and destroy your no, European no, Union. No, I'm not, Peter. And, and no, 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 uh, pear shape, you know. Yeah. We know you're going to be okay. Your friends, Goldman Sachs bankers, in, and and white supremacists in America, is going to look after you. We know, oh man. come on, Nigel. please, yeah, please. Course, you, I mean, I mean, Bannon is your, your good friend. Any you, other you charges know, you want to throw into this telephone conversation? No, but what, Nigel, answer one one thing. Is, uh, I know, no, no matter how much light we shine on you guys, you still kind of find a way to get out of it. You 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 said it yourself. You're gonna you're gonna, you're not going to stand for British Parliament just to solely concentrate on getting good deal for Britain. In the EU Parliament, you, did you know that the UK Party in yourself had the worst record of voting? Yeah, when, when the voting happened in European Parliament, yeah, you are the worst representative, yeah, of all the parties. Actually, no actually, one, no one, actually, no Peter, Britain, a, actually, Europe, Peter, actually, Peter, yeah? actually, Peter, some of our MEPs have amongst the highest attendance records of any members of the European Parliament. And if you compare my voting record to the voting record of other comparable party political leaders it's much higher than theirs is but this is but this is all irrelevant peter this is irrelevant i mean you clearly believe strongly in the european project can you not see that opposition to this project is growing not just on the right of politics but on the center and the left too well, it's not. It's only people like you and those who believe your, your lies and your brainwashing. They, they're going to fall. My brainwashing? People like, people, like, people like myself, I know the truth. I know what's best for this country. This country has been prosperous for so many years and decades. You're one member of, of, of Union, of European Union. And with you, 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 you're saying to us, you're going to go to European Union to negotiate, negotiate better deal for, for, for United Kingdom. Don't you realise that European Union, you're going to be, like, un- antagonising them? No one's going to have any... Deal no, with no listen, no. Peter, I've often been accused, Nigel, you mustn't be nasty to these people. You mustn't expose their faults and flaws, because if you do that, they'll be beastly to us. Well, now, I've got serious competition on that score, because a British Prime Minister is doing the same thing. Peter, I thank you for your call and all the incredibly charming, lovely things you said about me. It's wonderful. Uh, Michael, in Muswell Hill... What does Macron mean for the future of Europe? Well, I think quite the opposite. Had, had Le Pen come on, then it would have been seriously damaging uh-huh. um, uh, to, the, to the project. But, uh, Nigel, I have a simple question for you. How yes. do you seriously represent 52% uh, as a, a voting triumph for the will of the people? And yet, and yet, talk about the 64% of the electorate, of the voting people in France, as surrender to the Germans. Surely, that's an even greater well, expression of the will of people. I didn't quite say that, Michael. And whilst it was a bit of a referendum yesterday, it wasn't because, because personality was directly involved. The point, Michael, I'm making is that in the first round of the French presidential elections, 46.5% of those that voted, voted for avowedly Eurosceptic candidates. The guy that's just been elected clearly is a very, very strong EU supporter. I just think, Michael, I, this is what I think. I think he's hoodwinked the French a little bit because when people talk about reform, I'm not sure they understood that what he means by reform is even more power going to the Eurozone in Brussels. That's really the point I'm making. So can I respond to that? Of course. I think basically what you're saying is when when people vote, it's 52 percent or whatever percentage, but it, but it, it, it aligns with your particular viewpoint. 
then it represents a triumph of democracy. If, if, however, they disagree with Nigel Farage, take a different viewpoint, suddenly it's all about personality and being a hoodwink. Well, there's lots of people who think that 52% of the people in Britain who have been persuaded by the personality and you are you are the one who's called the personality, along with uh, uh, Boris. You're both personalities. So if there are any accusations of, of personalities swaying the voting public, I think they should be more at your door than, than the French. Well, of course, there's a bit of both. Even in a referendum, you're right. There has to be some degree of personal, of, of, of personal attraction or repulsion or whatever it is. Uh, Michael, look, you know... Macron has won. He's won it fair and square. The question we were debating tonight was, you know, does that mean the European project is saved and Euroscepticism in France is dead? All I'm saying, Michael, is no, that is not the case. But I thank you for your call. And my final thought on all of this uh, is that I think the emergence of Macron is a remarkable thing. It's happened very quickly. Even I was shocked. By the, she- by the sheer audacity of him going up to the stage to Ode to Joy and the European anthem. I think his idea of reform is going to upset the French further. Uh, but I always thought France was not the country to watch. The big change in the short term isn't coming from France, but it is coming from Italy. More of that, uh, perhaps, in the weeks and months to come. You've been listening to The Nigel Farage Show on LBC. I'm back tomorrow evening from 7. Coming up at 10, it's Ian Collins. But up next, it's Clive Bull.